Hello everyone, welcome to another Meerkat Monday. It's been a while, um, if the mic sounds a little bit weird because I had to put in a new spot just to, just to test some things out now. So sorry for not having like any Meerkat Mondays, you know, but the, the thing with those is that like, I started doing them because I thought the extra content would be fun to do and it would give me a chance to talk about things that I normally, normally don't talk about, you know, but since I don't, I don't actually care about that anymore as much. It put me into a space of making content that I didn't feel like making. If you saw my Mace Ruga and Philosophy Live video, then all of this got explained already and I'm just rehashing it. But if you didn't because it, it, it's a strange video, then, um, well, that's why, you know, because I started making content that I wasn't comfortable making, didn't really want to make, and was kind of only making because it's the YouTuber thing to do, you know. I'm no Mudahar, though. I'm no Charlie, you know. I'm no Moist Critical or anything like that, you know. I just... It, it just started feeling weird, it started feeling inauthentic, and I didn't want to do that. So I ended up making that Julia video because, not because I wanted to talk about it or had anything to say, because I knew people wanted to hear my thoughts on it, and eventually it just made me uncomfortable because I just, I just, I just don't normally talk about stuff like that. Oh, hold on, let me change you, Chan. So whoever's the Patreon person who got me into Yuka Chan, you know who you are. How dare you. Why? So for that Julia video, I ended up getting like 80 plus comments. I read maybe six of those comments and I did not even bother reading the rest of that because like I saw one comment that I did not like and at that point I was like, okay, you know what? I'm not doing this. And I don't like doing that, you know, because like the comment section is just another place for me to interact with the community and like talk to people and interact and stuff like that. And I don't even mind making videos that create a conversation, but I don't want that conversation to be like so tribalistic or debatey or like, your cat's just blah, 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 you know, stuff like that. I just, it's, when it gets like that, I, I don't want to, I don't want to engage. And that just makes, makes making the video and the content pointless, you know, and I just didn't want to do that. It wasn't worth it. I, I don't want to make a video and then not have to read the comments on there and stuff like that. So I stopped doing that for that, basically that reason. So if I have nothing to say that I actually want to talk about, then I'm not going to make America Monday. So that's why you haven't been seeing any America Mondays because I have absolutely nothing to say, which goes, which, which, which also goes along with the, the stardom situation with Rossi and all that stuff. You know, I just, I don't want to talk about it. I'm not a journalist. I'm don't have any more information than a lot of you have. In fact, a lot of you probably think you have more information, but you probably don't. Anybody who says podcasters, reporters, and that, any, any of those people who say that they have knowledge or know what's going on, or probably either don't know what's going on, or they're lying, or they're trying to sell you something, or all three, you know, just always be mindful of that. But I'm also very paranoid about just mainstream news anyways, because I don't trust them anyways. I don't trust wrestling journalists to begin with. And there's far too many wrestling podcasters out there anyway. So it's just like, I, I'm not going to add to that mix of noise. So I'm not going to talk about the Rossi situation or any of that. Just kind of ever, basically. Maybe I'll have an opinion about it on Patreon. In fact, I, I do have an opinion on it, but it's just not worth sharing, in my opinion. So it's important to me to be just authentic on here as much as I can possibly be. Even though the Meerkat is very much an extension, a very exaggerated representation of my manic passion itself on wrestling, it's still just a, a bit that I can put a mask on and really just talk about it because I need that extra bit of role, that a little bit of a personification, that plane of something in order to really interact and really express myself. That's kind of the only way. Otherwise, I kind of just talk like this. Uh, scattered brain, lots of stuttering, weird movement, you know. The reason I'm making this video and why the title is the title that it is, is that I'm releasing my short film that I made like seven years ago, eight years ago I filmed it, finally on this channel because it's my channel and I was always gonna release it on this channel, but then stardom content started like coming up, so I didn't release it because it felt weird. So I'm gonna finally release my short film, The Eternal Girl Ridley Parker. Um, it's a 20 something minute experimental, surreal, very intense, uh, art film about anxiety. It's like working for a dream type of Darren Aronofsky fast weird cuts mixed with Groundhog Day. It's very psychological. It's very, um, it gets intense basically. And I filmed this as part of the David Lynch uh, school that I went to, the Maharishi University of Management, now called the Maharishi International University, at the David Lynch um, Cinematic Arts Program. I don't remember the full name. It had a full pretentious name, you know. And I went to that school in 2016 to 2017. It was a year and a half long program. And the Maharishi School over in Fairfield, Iowa, um, specializes in teaching the students consciousness-based education, which sounds neat on paper, 
They teach you the transcendental meditation technique, which is the same meditation technique that Jim Carrey, the Beatles used, um, Jerry Seinfeld, Russell Brand. I guess it didn't help him though. Uh, <laughs> we were brought in with nine other students to make a web series that they wanted us to collectively make as a showrunner. There was no showrunner, which if you know anything about collaboration, know that that is an almost impossible task that all nine of us who paid money to go to the school had to agree and have our ideas put in, basically. It's like, imagine a Royal Rumble coming in and every single wrestler in there wanted to get their shit in and they would take, they would take no for an answer or else they walk out. That was basically the program. In fact, we ended up with seven people in the end instead of the nine. <laughs> so like, yeah, it didn't turn out well. And the web series in the end was a disaster, <laughs> a complete disaster. So I salvaged, in fact, I wrote my film to be a short film and I salvaged what I made to make this experimental project and I'm releasing that on Friday, finally. I need to do this because that time there was very traumatic, I would say. I had a mental breakdown and uh, almost drove my car off the side of the road, uh, purposely, and other very bad things, basically, you know. It was, it wasn't the peak of my mental illness that happened when I came home, and I was stuck in my bed for like a year and a half, basically, and I, and I had a hard, hard, hard time coming out of that one. But, over there, I was far more manic, my hypermania just freaking went through the roof. We had five bars, which did not help when you add alcohol and mania. No, you feel invincible, that's dangerous when you're in that level so it was very very tough but i also had the foresight to journal and to even film a lot of stuff which is pretty interesting which is where the documentary that i want to make will come in i digress i'm talking too much now the program itself i need to talk about before i introduce the project because it's imp it's important you know the project the the school and the town were very um Koti, I would say. It was very much culture based on the Transcendental Meditation Movement. There's two domes there, and there's a lot of meditators who go in there. I mean, it's it's dumb. I mean, they have this thing called the Maharishi Effect, where they think, they think, they think that 1% of the population around the world were to meditate, we can stop wars, which is absolutely delusional. So delusional. We once meditated in the dome to stop Trump from being elected. That clearly worked, right? Oh my God. And the funny thing about the town is that it's half meditators, half biker town. And the biker town hates the meditators. It's such a dichotomy. In fact, when we went there, the school legitimately, legitimately thought that once they taught us meditation, all of us David Lynch students who were very dark and stuff like that will just get suddenly happy and make Gilmore Girls. David Lynch's whole philosophy is meditate and create. There's supposed to be a freedom. He demands Final Cut in everything that he does. And he even talked to us about getting Final Cut. He had no idea that there's an asshole producer who stifled our creativity every single step of the way. They hired a showrunner from Everybody Loves Raymond to come and supervise us and she left after the first semester because it was just too fucking much. Like they hired Dwayne Dunham who was the editor of Twin Peaks and the guy who directed uh, the Clone Wars series on Cartoon Network for Star Wars. And he was a, I love talking to him, very wholesome guy. He had a lot of fun stories about George Lucas and stuff like that. But he was hired to re-edit our work, the student's work. That's pretty fucked up. I have a lot to say about this program. It was the most life-changing experience that I would never trade for the world. But it was traumatic as fuck. We were like at the bar like almost every day because it was just bad. We bankrupt the film program. We did. We are the last film program there. It's only a screenwriting course now. And if you're thinking about going there, stay here. Stay as long as you can. The, the meditation, yeah, it works, I think. I also think it's just copium, you know? I, I've done mindfulness and I get the same effect as transcendental meditation, you know? And they hate it when you bring up mindfulness. There's a picture of the Maharishi on every single room there. Like, and the picture of the Maharishi itself is very Jesus-like. So yeah, it's 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 strange. They once wanted to hire uh, Stephen something. I don't, remember, I don't remember his name, but if you ever watched Seventh Heaven, the preacher in, in that show, The Father, Stephen Collins, yeah. Oh, it's even worse. Okay, so Stephen Collins admitted to molesting underage girls in the therapy session that was recorded. He lives in Fairfield, Iowa, and he's a meditator, and he's there doing hardcore meditation. The school wanted to hire him to play, ironically, a preacher that gets forgiven. 
I have a lot of stories, my friends. I'm sorry I'm talking too much, but I'll be releasing my short film on Friday. It's 22 minutes. You don't have to watch it. It's not for anybody but for me. I need to release it, though. I need to finally get it out of my system, get that part of the story, my story, out of there, basically. And then when I make my documentary, I can finally finish the story like Cody, basically, if he ever finishes the story. Thank you, everyone, for being patient with, I don't know, seeing my face, I guess. I don't know. I do want to thank my mighty strong 300 army it's about between 300 and 400 of you who watch my non-joshi stuff that has nothing to do with anything about wrestling and y'all i appreciate a lot because to me you're my core audience because you're watching me for me and i so appreciate that that means if i ever get a chance to make my wrestling movie that i really really want to make my feature film if i can get at least that 300 to 400 of y'all to watch and even support it and pay for it that's amazing that is the dream. To build a community like that, what I'm now realizing lately is the purpose of the channel. It's not to be a YouTuber. It's not to produce amazing content and all that. I mean, that's part of it. But it's also to build a community to just the cool, chill, wonderful people who like Joshi, who like the absurdity of Joshi, who like the comedy in it, but also appreciate the performance art of it. That's who my main audience I've been trying to attract is, you know, because Joshi purists already hate me. They don't like me. They don't. I, I know because I see it. To my Mighty 300, I love y'all. You are my audience and you, I appreciate y'all unbelievably a lot. You know, Mighty 300 army has a ring to it, you know. <laughs> this is Sparta! Anyways, thank you all for watching. I'll see y'all later. Bye.